Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Facebook family, welcome to, all right, let's, let's have a little bit more of that. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose. With me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey, what's my name? Big Papa, Brian Post. All right, so hope everyone's having a tremendous Thursday. I think this is Thursday. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Mimi. Hello, Carrie. So I hope you're having a tremendous Thursday. It's been a good day for Big Papa. Um, hey there, Paula. I uh, <coughs> have developed a little cough. There's a little Crescent City crud going around, so it finally caught up with me. I thought that, you know, I've been going from this place to this place to this place that I was, like, skipping it. I was so happy, and I think what it was is I was sitting down having breakfast with a little kiddo. He's like seven, and he was sniffly one morning. We were having breakfast. I bet that little sucker's what gave me those germs. So anyway, it's all good. So I was in a meeting earlier today, and it gave me a good, good, uh, good subject to talk to you guys about. Um, this is a wasn't an IP meeting. It was a kind of a support team meeting at a school with a mom for her six-year-old who's going to be going into kindergarten from preschool to kindergarten next year. And she's concerned and wants to make sure he gets, you know, his needs met. And so we were talking about his challenges and the principal is right, right, and making the notes. And so it made me like midway through or as we were getting finished, it really didn't take that long. As we were getting through, I thought, you know, this is what's ideal because they were talking about wanting him to be successful through school. And mom was, you know, her fear is that if, if the school's not aware of his, his needs, then things will fall through the cracks and they won't understand his behaviors. And so the principal was very appeasing and, and very thankful for the meeting and, you know, took very good notes, was very diligent. But then I shared also that we should take that list of things that we had identified for this young man and have the teacher create an index card. And this is something I've advocated for teachers to do over the years, for years now, that when you have an IEP for your child, it's not enough to have a group of professionals sitting around talking about what's his, what's in his best interest and then, you know, brainstorming about how to help him be successful. That's that's fantastic, but it's not enough. There is always in my experience, hey Barry Martin, always in my experience a big drop off between the IEP to the classroom. And what happens is you have so many students, you have so many needs, it's hard to, to keep track of everything. And so how do you remedy that? You create a little index card. And this is the pre-planning that makes all the difference. You create a little index card. And that little index card can get added to, it can get modified, and it literally can follow that kid from one teacher to the next. It goes in the teacher's desk. And until that teacher puts this child at top of mind, 
in her conscious awareness, in his or her conscious awareness, and becomes mindful of their challenges, of their deficits, of their needs, of the things that they require to help them be successful. They pull their desk out because they pull their desk drawer out every single morning and they see that card sitting right there. And it's just a little mindfulness tip. And that's actually why Trisha Bridgewater and I created the four point trauma informed checklist to give teachers a daily checklist that they could go just read through it. it takes about five to seven minutes, read through it. And every question triggers a thought and they just check off, check off, check off. It triggers a thought. And the whole purpose not only is to, to get the thinking generated, but to create mindfulness. So putting that child's special needs on an index card. And you as a parent can use this too. And I really suggest, you know, that parents use use the, the, the four-point trauma-informed checklist every morning. You can do that too. Um, let me see what that website is. Pull that up real quick. Uh, I think it's posttraumacheklist.com. Yes, posttraumacheklist.com. So you can go to posttraumacheklist.com, hello Sue, and you can download the four-point trauma-informed daily checklist. This is good for parents as well as for teachers. But the whole point of this little meeting, which I thought was fantastic, I love it when there's good energy in a group of school professionals, um, is to create this index card for the teacher so that she can be aware of what this child's needs are. And over time, you become more and more conscious of the child's needs and then it just helps your overall understanding of this child throughout the day. And it helps you pay more attention. Attention, awareness, attunement. Attention, awareness, and attunement. All very important. Getting attuned to your special needs children in your classroom is so important. Because a lot of times your special needs children in your classroom, when they get really stressed out, they can disrupt the entire classroom. That's why you want to invest time and energy in those children as opposed to wait until they get completely overwhelmed, the class gets disrupted, you feel frustrated and stressed out and you don't know what led to what. I'm telling you, you can prevent that from the very beginning. Little index card, write down child's history. You know, put it initials, little history, what child responds to best, what child doesn't respond to well. Bam, right there. Just Look at it every single day or download posttraumacheklist.com. That'll make a huge difference too. I think it is a beautiful little checklist. So that's all. I, th I think that's sufficient. We are in February. You see, she's, this mom is on it. She is already calling these meetings for her kids. She wants people thinking about it now. You have a conversation about now, about next year. No one feels stressed. No one feels overwhelmed. No one feels threatened. It's just amazing. And Julia says it does help to be more organized. Absolutely. And hello to you, Tammy Martin, as well. So, yes, I think that's all, guys. Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from our same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm. Or we can stop. We can slow down. Take three to ten deep breaths and choose love. Big Papa loves you. God bless each and every one of you. I hope you have a fantastic evening. I, at five o'clock, am about to do a um, webinar for the eighth grade parenting show. The great parenting show is this is the eighth year. Jacqueline's done this out of Canada. So I'm about to be on for that. I thought I could find a link so you guys could tune into the pre-recording, but I guess not. But, uh, Maybe I'll, uh, I wonder if she would mind if I streamed it. Maybe she would. But anyway, we're going to close this out, and I just may sign on again here in a little bit. All right. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Join us live on weekdays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. Thank you.
That's www.feartolovebook.com.